co-founding director of Adams Carl Taylor. I'm going to say 10 things with 20 slides, um, and I'm going to try and resist show and tell. First thing is learn to read the brief, brief all of us. This gives me the lens of a, of a passionate structural engineer to speak from, so I'm not going to speak as an educator. So I will be uh, impolite, deliberately so, through, through the 20 slides if I can. One of the biggest problems in our industry today, and I've been uh, embracing collectivism and the way we all behave with open culture for 10 years, I'm now beginning to resist this in the last two years, led by some of my clients who feel we give away far too much for nothing all of the time. So I'm beginning to bring collective behavior, almost religious, away to, to a different model. Rather than using architects who are likely to sue me or, or uh, other designers, I thought I'd use X Factor and Pop Idol to tell you. The consequence of what's going on is we're creating a lot more averageness throughout all of our work. So you get the bottom type pop stars, no Jimi Hendrix, no Bob Dylan anymore. Most of the tools that we have uh, are be being used, in my opinion, uh, by people through automation as weapons. I see lots of diagrams of almost anything that means nothing at all to, to anyone. So my interpretation of inter interdisciplinary discourse using these tools is slightly different and bent again from, from the position of a passionate structural engineer. I'll give you two quick examples. Digital Projects was used on our first project here with, with Lantern Welding. Enormous digital work, you're drawing. We have to press it through a very simple, uh, low-tech craft pressing uh, steel, steel device, which didn't work. So there was no connection between low-tech and high-tech there. The other issue of collectivism is this new hybrid. I have a, a, a beguiling uh, emotion about the way engineers and engineers are appearing in the world, engaging us all in what they consider to be interdisciplinary discourse. I think this is absolutely rubbish. There are five materials. There will always be five materials in what we do. That doesn't mean we can't use them in a better way. Egg and bacon ice cream is a good example with the right set of tools. So let's not dream about new material. They will be good for us, but there are five good ones there for the next century and beyond. So let's learn to use them. The tools are making us produce mediocrity, banality, and ubiquity. I think merit and curiosity is more important. This could be any airport anywhere as a consequence of what we are doing and we're here to talk about, I think. So I'd like to move more into, let's be a bit more curious about what we're doing rather than just respond. I think scientific approach to research and the architectural approach needs to be brought together. We scientists laugh at what you architects call architectural research. And I think that's partly because education practice and construction doesn't actually merge. So we've got to merge those things and, and overlap them in a better way. We've got to ban wishful interpretation. The, the project at the top is us delivering Mazda with Boston Partners, despite what anyone says. Successful, superb building, first building delivered by a great team. At the bottom, you see wishful interpretation of green technologies and digital education. That we've got to ban. We started this project with DRL as a thought to production experiment. I play it in reverse because I think we we'll need to go back from product to process. The best parts were in the computer and in the fabrication. Assembling and all the human activities that you see here were absolute rubbish. We need to edit that out as much as we can. Um, torpedo the old processes. This is eliminating dogmatic institutions, including the Institute of Structural Engineers here who basically forces to work in a certain way at the creative end. The architect has a lot of work, the engineer, certainly a bit more, m and &E don't appear. Then at some point, the whole thing is given away to another team who delivers it. Inclusivity, I think, is, is a major part of, of our industry across cultures, genders, and economies. If we learn from these guys, we will be in less trouble if we were brothers and brothers and sisters. And we need to learn from that. That's just one layer. The experts on costs give us budgets, the contractors give us a cost from a different planet. The first guys get the numbers wrong, the latter guys just steal the money. The <laughs> bit in between is what we as educators and practitioners can actually get a grip of to inform these two ends better, I think we'll improve. I had a look at well, how much money is made by our contractors and plotted that against um, the biggest consultants in the country. 
And what you see is the thousands of millions of pounds made by contractors, the spearheads, often the, the practitioners and, and the educators who invented these buildings, make very little out of that. I think the developing world and the developed world working together, most of the pioneering is happening in the developed world. We're lucky. We won the Blue Betkin Prize, by the way, last night with the Shanghai Expo, which we do there every week. Fantastic project in China. The, the pictures down, and down below are not from that project. Here, um, abuse of safety and, and uh, human rights is a concern to me. I think repositioning some of the young journalists in our, in our field um, is a good idea, so we don't get really terrible headlines like this. If we can move architecture and the built environment into popular culture, like the other buildings at the bottom do, we'd be better off. My own uh, vision of the new evolution is beyond the digital man, me, which is 2010. I think the artist and the machine in 2020 is what's going to create the best things in the future. And we can have a, a discussion on that. Um, my last slide is, uh, or second last slide, is showing that in some simple, intelligent, uh, automated, and cheap projects that we have been involved with, the future is already here. The top one is a design school with uh, foreign office architects, bottom one with Zaha. These are doing some of the things we've already I've already described you know, automation, simple things, and then responding to that. The future resides in what I think created, you know, the creative synthesis and disciplinary discussions are easy for all of us. The two more difficult things are how to be respectful and ethical. And I've stolen from Francis Bacon to say that certainly in my view, I'm greedy for things that will come out of chance rather